Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Okay, we're back to likable science here on a given Friday afternoon with our chief scientist, Ethan Allen. Hey. Welcome back to your show, Ethan. <laughs> Glad to be here. Hey, <laughs> thanks for joining me. <laughs> you know, we were talking just a moment ago about how it wouldn't it be great to get back to the 17th century, um, because you know then there wouldn't be all these complications that the technology and science have wrought for us. But there wouldn't be any of the benefits either. Yeah, there wouldn't be any dentists to help fix your right. teeth. Is the problem? Yeah. Yeah. Most of your kids would die before age five. Yeah. You were talking about a little a little pill that would wipe out you know a number a large percentage of the population with no pain right. and just disappear them right. and, and you know I, I'd be in favor of that you know I mean although there are ethical considerations to a, a, a pill <laughs> like that but but you know as long as they don't disappear you and me as long as we can finish our show here there we go <laughs> you know, I'm good <laughs> but it make the world a, a kind of easier place right. in many ways yeah know. if you thought 90% of the population people on earth were gone there's a yeah. lot pr less yeah. pressure on things less and pressure the people, as they recovered, could not make the same mistakes that we had made before. Yeah, here, you know? yeah. And, 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 the, and the science would be rolled back. Maybe we need that. And, and that takes me to the title of our show um, here on Likeable Science. Your genes, your privacy, and the public good, whatever's left of the public <laughs> good these days, uh, rights to privacy against law enforcement obligations uh, and, and new technologies that will now allow them to play out those obligations. Right, right. And we're talking specifically uh, about the, the incident Incident where the what they call the Golden State serial killer, whatever right. it was, was uh, he was found uh, only a week or two ago on the basis of DNA evidence. Right. Can you tell the story? Well, so he this guy had done multiple murders and rapes back in the 1970s in California, I think around the Sacramento area. Never left much trace, but did leave a little DNA that they were able to find on one scene, I guess, or a couple scenes. They weren't able ever to do anything with that. But now, because of sites, and I don't know which site it was, they didn't specify whether it was Ancestry.com or 123andMe or whatever, uh, these sites where people upload samples of their DNA, basically, and search for relatives and want to know more about their, their ancestry. So the police basically took that DNA that they had sitting there, sort of made a profile of this guy and stuck it up and said, you know, find my matches, you know, find, find who my family is here. And they found family, basically. And when they found family members, they were then able to triangulate better. And sure enough, they found this guy who had been, uh, who was an ex-cop who had lived in that same area at that same time. And suddenly one thing led to another, and they were able to uh, make a convincing case that it was him. Boy, I mean, it's stranger than fiction. This would be great on CSI. I'm only sorry no. that CSI didn't pick it up. <laughs> Maybe they will later in one of their episodes. It'll be interesting to see in, in the court case, I mean, because they f had to follow him around and get samples of his DNA with, without his knowledge, basically, from things he had left. And things Is that an touched. invasion of something? Well, some courts, I think, have held that, and I don't know what the current U.S. rulings are on that. Uh, and there's a whole issue of to the people who posted their DNA there, the, that guy's family, basically, was their privacy invaded in some way? I don't know. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe they, they didn't like him anyway. Yeah, they, they did, apparently, those people all did sign something uh, on that website that sort of said your data, as well as looking for your relatives, your data may be used for other purposes. Oh, the purposes meaning criminal, <laughs> well, that, criminal that, investigation. <laughs> it wasn't specified, apparently. But the, 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 this article in uh, Nature pointed out you know, we're going to have to be start addressing this kind of stuff, and we can't just sort of let it fall by the wayside and have things like this keep happening, right? Yeah, yeah. Let, let's unpack for a minute. Okay. okay. So the guy commits all these crimes, and he he, he leaves his DNA in, in some places, maybe his hair, right? Something like skin, who knows right. what? And uh, and the police, even years later, you know, because at the time he did this, the DNA technology was really not not, right. not in play. Right. So later on, years they go back and they look. What well, I suppose at the bodies or the Scenes of the crime, and they and they find examples of his uh, his hair and his skin and nails, what have you. I suspect they had pulled that stuff out, knowing it was evidence at the time, but they couldn't do much with uh, it. Ah, maybe 
Maybe so, know, yeah, yeah, until yeah. Until I had him to match it with. You know. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, of course, uh, you know, there's a, the whole chain of custody issue about, right. you know, wh where did they get it from and how, how well, you know, preserved was the chain of custody. But let's assume they could show a good chain of custody mm -hmm. even years later, because right. the more time it goes by, the more difficult it is to ch show the chain right. of custody. Because um, the witnesses who would tell you how it got from point A to point B aren't around. Right. Right? Uh, and the systems uh, may not be as explicit as they are today. <laughs> Okay, so now, now we have this uh, DNA, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a, one of those closed cases. There's a program on television like that. Oh, cold case closed cases, right. and some investigators, some smart investigators, said, hmm, we have DNA, let's see what we can do with Ancestry or one of the others. And so uh, they go to Ancestry, right. and they say, we have the DNA, and here are the specs of the DNA. Um, look in your database for, what, genetic characteristics, which I guess must be reduced to numerical numerical factor, numerical right. data. Right. And gene sequences or sequences, or gene sequences. sequences. Yeah. And they say, you know, what do you got that's like this? Right. And apparently uh, the science is such now that they can actually find what they got like this. That must be an interesting experience. Right. And and the the data, you know, the, the dots and dashes and the zeros and ones, mm -hmm. uh, the match up at least to some extent. Right. Not a lot necessarily, but close enough to say, hmm, this is a lead. Right. God, CSI must be wild about yeah. this. Okay. So, all right. So now we got a lead. We know it's not the same person, or we can assume right. they didn't have a perfect match. Then not a perfect match. Right. They could have had a perfect match. Except he he, he had never put his DNA up on that. Ah. Uh, uh, right. Okay. Right. If he, well, if, he smart, so, if you know, if you right. are a serial, <laughs> killer. If you are a serial, well, do don't. not send your DNA. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to what I'm telling you. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And furthermore, you know, if you have any relatives around, tell them not to do it either. <laughs> you don't want to go to jail. Goodness. Okay, so they find people who are close. Right. How close are these people they found? I don't. I don't know the details of that. I assume again by the percentage match to the DNA they had, the sample from the suspect, they could say this is, these are likely siblings or uncles and aunts or cousins. They could probably give a, a rough relationship match. Yeah. That, again, that, that then narrows the pool of suspects, basically. So they, they can tell the proximity right. in a family way. So they can actually create, I guess, sure, Ancestry does this, doesn't it? Right. They can create a kind of a family tree based on what they have. Right. And certainly they can see if this guy, his DNA, is in or close to that tree by the proximate, you know, yeah, exactly. proximate I mean, data. Yeah. yeah, they've done it thousands of times and found people's long lost relatives. Sure, sure, sure. Relatives, they do separated it all the time, birth, don't they? Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Different parentage than you thought, you know, like, oops. Uh, all they, kinds of different they things. They weren't thinking of chasing serial killers when they invented no, that. No. They wanted to make some money right. and help sure. you understand your ancestors, right? right? They never thought. Right. And so, somebody had the bright idea of going to them, okay? Right. Now, this is interesting. So the cop, and I know he's the kind of cop that we'd see on television all day long, handsome, you know. <laughs> he, so he wakes up one day, aha! He says, I will go to Ancestry. What a bright guy, mm -hmm. huh? He must have had scientific training, yeah? Maybe he was on one of our shows with <laughs> you. <laughs> so he says, aha, I will go to Ancestry, and I will see if they can make a match or a close match on this. Right. Okay, what does Ancestry say to him? Because Ancestry, like any database company these days, you know, should be at least a little, like Facebook, a little concerned about your personal data. I, I suspect. He, he, I, it's my reading between the lines and what I've read. He didn't say this is a police investigation. He just uploaded a profile. That this is, you know, this is a, the DNA profile that we've got. You know, and I'm looking, I'm looking for matches. You know, just like anyone else would. Oh, do. like it was his. Yeah, like it was his or some. Sure. You know, you no know. search warrant. Right. No, no judge involved. No. no and nothing. again, the, the data on these databases is, is to some extent public data. People have signed off typically and saying that it's public data. You know, they understand they want it searched, right? Sure. It, it, you can't find put, my answer. You know, right? It's you don't mine. Put, you don't find put, my answer. You don't put it up there and expect it to be shielded and protected and hidden away and nobody gets to see it because sure. there'd be no the point to put it up there. The idea is to match. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's all. Wow, so it's very, it's very interesting, and there are people who are very upset at the police who feel it was a big overreach. And I'm sure the killer is really ticked off. <laughs> I'm sure the killer's attorneys are working <laughs> big time to find <laughs> what do we have that we can. Yeah, I, I mean there have been those cases in other in other uh, places about dealing with that kind of thing. With, with is your DNA your own? And if you've discarded a, a cigarette butt, is that cigarette butt like your property? 
or can the police now pick that up and get DNA off of that legally? Yeah. Well, in general, it's, yeah. as far as I know, it's been, if you've discarded something, you've thrown it away, you know, it's, it's, you've indicated you have no interest in it, so it's, it's sort of fair game for them well, to grab. So I suppose I snoop in your trash can. Right. I, mean, I don't know if trash cans are protected these right. days. Yeah. Maybe not. But uh, but they can't like walk up to you and say, you know, stick out your tongue, let us let, let, <laughs> no, let me swab it. You know? <laughs> but who knows? You know, there's lots of ways to deceive people into providing their DNA. But, and, but the technology, yeah, it's getting so much better. Somebody brushes by you in a, in a crowded street, and they, they may have brushed by you and, and swabbed you. You know, swab you right yeah, on your and, arm and, and, and your a little hair. Just yeah, yeah. you know, take a little hair. Yeah, the, the guy doesn't yeah, even realize yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I mean, you know, there's so many questions that come to mind. I mean, one is, can, can the police do this? They're kind of deceiving ancestry. Right. Um, the, you know, that, that protected. Uh, it's going to have to go up the courts, I think. Right. Um, the other thing is, uh, suppose you were wanted to find out something about somebody. And so you somehow managed to get some DNA. You could pretend mm -hmm. to be that person, mm -hmm. and you could find out a lot of things about that, you know, genetic things about that person. Oh, yeah. His family, her family, way back when. Sure, sure. Uh, I mean, you know, actually, oh God, can you imagine you're, <clears throat> you're, you're, you're engaged or you're dating, you're dating mm -hmm. a person, got this, you're dating a person. Hi. And somewhere, you know, somewhere in the process uh, when you're, you know, intimate with this mm -hmm. person, <laughs> you get a little DNA, excuse me, can mm -hmm. I just, you know, <laughs> can you swap or some hair off your arm, right. if you mind? <laughs> Doesn't take much though. And the know? following day, I sent it to Ancestry, and now I know, right. you know, who's who. Right. And I can find out who, her, you know, family is, right. whether they're rich or poor. I can look them up, right? Right. So the, I can find out who the real person so, is. So apparently a few years ago in Sweden, they had uh, one of their kings, I think King Alfred, or some bones they thought were King Alfred, but it wasn't clear. And they actually went in and did this and confirmed that it really was him. And, but the Swedes refused to release the sequences because they pointed out, yeah, this would give all kinds of information to family members about health issues, about relatedness. Sure. You know, that sure. sort of, they didn't need to know particularly. Sure. You, you know, you get all kinds of information, right. including information that you and I cannot even figure out yet. Oh, yeah. Like, you yeah. know, it could be anything and everything, but, but including could, medical information. It could be incredibly valuable stuff to know in advance, too. I mean, you, yeah. for instance, you find out that you've got Huntington's disease, right? As a young person, that you know, you know, you're going to be dead by the time you're in your late forties, and if I'm a, about to marry you and, 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 and have, have a family, end, you know, I'd yeah, like to you know about that. Put, put your affairs in order early on and be sure everything's clean and neat, right? And yeah. so, yeah. Well, I, okay. Suppose I, I'm, uh, I'm interviewing you for a job, and I take you out to the company cafeteria, yeah, right. and I say, after you finish your coffee, yeah, okay. can, can I please have your <laughs> coffee cup? <laughs> right. I like to, you know, keep the coffee cup <laughs> in my file folder, you know, and and. and and the following day, you're checking up on everything it, about this person. I would and not you don't need a search warrant. I would not be surprised to find that kind of stuff goes on yeah. at all, at all. And I, you indeed, don't say a word. Indeed, if you're a place like the NSA or the CIA, I, I would be I would be shocked if they're not doing that, quite frankly. I mean, they should be, you know. Yeah, if they're watching this program, right. they will be. <laughs> <laughs> don't watch. <laughs> so, you know, what, what's what's going on here is, uh, is it's sort of a, an acceleration of um, technology that can find out the secrets of our lives right exactly. down to our cell structure right. and our DNA uh, without us necessarily knowing about it. Right. And then taking that information and using that in, you know, in, in business context, in family context, right. in criminal context. Yeah. And it's, it's again, it's one of these interesting issues where the science and technology have sort of gotten out a, a little bit ahead of the control systems for them. And uh, we don't quite know you know, how we can and how we should use this. I mean, with nuclear bombs, right, we, we did that, we use them, rightly or wrongly, you know, now everyone pretty much agrees. Like that's a big no-no. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Don't do a nuclear bomb. Yeah, yeah you know, right. You know, it's, that's that's messy. Thing, yeah, thing. long, long. Yeah, but, but thing. DNA uh, right. and sequencing and all that, right. that we don't know yet. Yeah, and yet, but you know what? The good news. The good news is that right after this break, you and me, we're going to figure it out. <laughs> we're going to know. We're going to come up with a solution on all of this. I can hardly wait. <laughs> Aloha. My name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. 
please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha. Good afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists, both from here and the mainland, on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. You know, Ethan, I really enjoy our discussion. That's Ethan Allen, one of the chief scientists of Think Tech. Um, now, join the discussions because it always leads to more and more questions. And, you know, we begin to see the, you know, the, the, the prospects of new technology and, and even look over the horizon and see even greater technology going forward. Um, you know, it's like, for example, you, you and I discussed uh, CRISPR, mm -hmm. you know, and last Sunday on... Um, on um, uh, 60 Minutes, right. you know, my wife says, oh, that's really fabulous. That's a fabulous technology. Ah, you know, Ethan and I discussed that years ago. <laughs> so we're ahead of the game here. There Thank you, you for that. Oh, more than welcome. It's always fun. <laughs> so, okay, so we, we know that there are draconian things that can happen, especially in criminal investigations, but maybe in many, many other things oh, in the sure. world. No, you know, this, government can be This can be used for eugenics in the, in the worst sort of way, right? Now, I mean... Huh. Yeah, it's your, your essential you. Huh. And you were saying during the break about viruses, about how we generate all these viruses. So we don't even know the extent of the information that can be gathered about us. We are a, a, a tableau of bacteria and viruses and DNA. We, we have special footprints. My God, our chemical makeup, our biochemical makeup may be able to tell people what we've been doing with ourselves, sure. right? Sure. Uh. People can now actually... <clears throat> that is, if you put your finger down on a surface, they can not only pull DNA of yours off there, but they can pull enough DNA of the, the microbiota that live on, on in your skin that they can essentially uniquely identify you by that, not even by your own DNA, but by the, 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 the stuff that lives on you. Yeah. The, I mean, it's yeah, really yeah. amazing that we're more and more this big data technology, the, the ability to look at genomic data on a vast scale is, is really reshaping our understanding of the world. We didn't have any clue until a few years ago that the oceans are just filled with viruses. And they're, I mean, literally filled, filled to the extent that, that they're always being you know, blown up out of the water by salt spray and everything, and because viruses are so, so tiny, they're not affected by gravity particularly, so they drift actually above the jet stream and gradually just rain down upon us. And I say gradually to the tune of about 800 million viruses per day, per square meter, all over the earth. It's incredible. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's incredible. We didn't know this. Right. Now we know this. Yeah. And what those viruses can tell us, you know, not only putting your finger down, maybe you look in your brain, mm -hmm. I mean, non invasively, right. and find out what you're thinking at a given <laughs> Wasn't there a movie about this, you know, pre crime? Remember pre crime? I didn't see pre crime, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, the minority report. Uh -huh, you remember okay. that yeah, one? Yeah. So, you know, you get people who can actually sense what the other guy mm -hmm. is going to do, right. and then you, you know, you, you try to stop him. Right. You, you, you prosecute him right. for a crime he didn't commit, but he is likely, predictably mm -hmm. likely to commit. So, I mean, so much information that we could get and right. we will get going right. forward that we really have to take this moment and stop and, and think, you know, how does this affect our condition in the world? Exactly. There are now tests for certain... Uh, receptors in certain tissues that you can take and that will predict people's tendency sort of towards high impulse behavior, you know. Or even um, criminal behavior. Well, yeah, and that's, that's the thing, is people who are really tend to have a lot of high impulse, uh, particularly given certain environmental conditions, tend to be the people who are end up in the jails and committing a lot of the yeah, crimes. Yeah. And, and if you spot somebody with this, are you allowed allowed now to, to take proactive steps and either hopefully help calm this person down, help give them a supportive environment where they're not going, going to want to do it and channel their impulsivity into art, artistic creativity or something like this? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Well, and going back to CRISPR, 
You know, I, I can find that you have the tendencies that are going to create mm -hmm. problems, social problems. So I, I take so. your DNA and I fix you. Right. You know, you're not going to do that anymore. I, I splice and dice and your DNA is changed with CRISPR. Yeah. Yeah. This is coming. Uh, well, 60 yeah. Minutes said it's the next five years. Yeah. You and I will find out sooner, though. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and so no, I, I'm changing you I'm, and I'm reducing the risk that you're going to be a social problem. Right. Right. But then I might find that I can't change you. Right. I can't do it. In which case, I give you that pill that we were talking about before <laughs> and make you disappear. It doesn't hurt. It just disappear. And so in, in a way we control the development of the species that way, um, one method or another by, by predicting what that individual will do. Right, but I mean it's the same kind of thing. Can can you medicate people against their will if, if well, they are presenting the a, a danger to themselves or others. So schizophrenics yes. often would well, well, rather deal with all the pain and agony of their schizophrenia rather than taking some particular first round, first round of drugs they developed, which had really bad side effects. Um, yeah, that's the problem. I mean, you, you know, I mean, if you let government, ooh, government, if you let government do what it wants, you know, um, such as uh, uh, protect us from socially unacceptable, mm -hmm. what it considers socially unacceptable human beings, that's really out of control. That's mm -hmm. not consistent with our, our civilization, if you right. want, or the, the highest forms, the highest thinking in our civilization, all our civilization. Um, so the question is, uh, are we going to stop government from getting this information? I mean, if you look at the Facebook example, Mm -hmm. I don't think too much happened right. to stop Facebook. Mm -hmm. I think they just changed their public relations campaign. Mm -hmm. There was a piece about that today mm -hmm. on HPR. Um, so the question is, you know, uh, are you going to try to stop government? Are the courts going to stop government? Uh, yeah. Are the courts going to say, you can't get that information from Ancestry and use it to do a criminal investigation because it's invasive? Uh, I, mean, I mean, actually, in, in Norway, apparently, they, they did that. There was a suspected killer who had then died at a hospital hospital before he was actually convicted, and the police wanted to get his DNA to sort of confirm this, and the hospital said, no, he's still got a right to privacy basically once he's dead, you know. Uh, that may be settled yeah. law in Sweden, if it is yeah. settled, Norway, but it's but certainly yeah, right. not settled here. Right, yeah, uh, and it seems to me that this is exactly the thing, is, is more and more we're seeing that we're being faced with new questions about what, what is okay to do. But, I mean, your answer, can we stop the government from doing that? I don't think we can. I mean, big data is here to stay, you know. We're, we're, the, tech, the technologies to gather it are now routine, widespread, growing every day. You mean I have to accept that? What about well, Walden Pond? Exactly. We spoke of Walden Pond. Right, right. Can I, why can't I go off into and, the woods with and, my DNA and, and be disconnected from all of this? And, and you can do it, but you're still going to be on Google Maps. You know, uh, <laughs> somebody else can still probably track you down. You know? Or my cousins. Right. right. <laughs> you know, they can, they can scrape your DNA off your porch, you know. And <laughs> so how does this change my life? I mean, let's, let's do it in a different one is, if we, we stop the government from doing that, uh, it's going to mean that uh, I remain free, to use that term, um, well, you know, means, from this kind of invasive other, investigation. Just means that, like, commercial applications and the bad guys are going to use that information. <laughs> that, well, that's true. That's true. The bad guys can find me. Right. There's no, you know, they, the bad guys can look for you, too, in Walden Pond. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in any event, my, my uh, privacy is done. Uh, even Trump said that recently. Right. Privacy is done. Right. Um, and I think um, it, what it means is two things. One is um, there is no privacy. There's no, you can't hide from your past. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't hide from your cousins. Mm -hmm. You can't hide from the, the police or government ultimately unless the government takes a position on this. Right. And, and that is going to change my conduct. Right. I mean, is it fair to say, do you think, um, that I am less likely to be a serial killer if, if I know, per this case, that somebody can find me even if I, you know, cover my tracks? Yeah, one, one presumes that, you know, if, and I think, I think studies have shown this, that basically if punishment for crimes is more swift and more certain, the crime rate does tend to go down, you know? If crime, you can get away with it, you know, your odds of being caught are low, and the punishment, even if you're caught, is unlikely, sure, you know, why not do the crime? So that's know? a positive thing. Right, in that, in that sense it is. It's, again, there are, you know, it's, a, it's a, like all these things, it's a two-edged sword, you know. Yeah. Uh, but gov then government can abuse it. Right. Government can want to, you know, uh, right. make make a certain subset disappear for reasons that are not good reasons. Sure, sure. And they can find the subset so easily. Mm -hmm. I mean, think of all the racial stuff going on. You know, if you have one thirty second, mm -hmm. you know, of some kind of, you know, racial 
blood or mm -hmm. DNA, they're going to find you so easily right. using the same technique right. they used with the with the golden, what do you call it, yeah. the, the, the killer in right. San Francisco. Yeah. Right. Um, so uh, that's pretty scary. You, you become subject to, you know, all kinds of bad things right. like that. And, and so now there's a whole thing, I'm, I'm sure there must be a, a black market in it is, is for sort of doing fake fake IDs in a sense of putting up a fake Ancestry.com DNA sample, you know, and, and trying to essentially make the database unreliable, right, by confounding it with, with, with false data, yeah, with, yeah. It, with bad well, data. We data. talked about that didn't yeah. we, before the show began. It's so interesting to, to think that, okay, you and I sitting here together, we are assuming the science works. Mm -hmm. We are assuming the science is accurate and credible, right. and that if I want to find that killer, I, I right. can find him using the science. Right. But I can muck up that technology, too. Yeah. I, can, I can take the position that it's inaccurate, I can meddle with it, right. I can somehow screw it up, right. and then all of a sudden it's no longer credible. Right, and if that happens, then the whole scientific enterprise suffers a blow, and basically humanity does. I mean, I think it's pretty inarguable that science and technology really have vastly improved a lot of humans. You know, more and more people live, we, you know, our infant mortality is a tiny fraction of what it used to be. Our lives are longer, are healthier, yes, we don't spend years rotting teeth on our heads, and I mean, in a thousand ways, we're better off due to science and technology. So, you know, I don't want to see the trust in science deteriorated, you know? I, yeah. I, don't, I don't want to see that. It's, it's, Suppose it's a I, I plant right. your DNA mm -hmm. next to a dead body. Right. And, and so then, now the police are all confused at a fundamental right. point of their and investigation. And then because you've, you've, you've done this show, you have plenty of stuff that you can now make me, make a video of me saying, oh, I killed this guy. I was pissed off at him and I slaughtered him. Right, right. You know? A confession, right. essentially. And, then you got and, I, and I manipulate right. the sound, the, the sound so form, the waveform of your I'm, voice. I'm saying it perfectly. Seen that. Yep. yep. And there, I, there I've confessed on, on tape, and I'm, my DNA has been found next to his body, and you know, like, what more do they need? Yeah. So Drag me away. You know? Just <laughs> as this technology can be used yeah. to you know, discover the killer, it can be used to frame the killer. Right. Yeah. And then you, know, you go to court. And ultimately, I'm afraid the human condition requires going to court and hashing this all out <laughs> and having you know, God, a prosecutor and a defense, <laughs> whatever you need, to argue that maybe it's not accurate, or okay. maybe it is right. accurate. <laughs> no, I mean there was you know there was question question when fingerprinting first came out was that a legitimate technology to use you know was it meaningful did it did it really identify people you know and that's now been well established that's that's pretty decent you know if, if properly done and the judge or jury right. or or the little black box machine mm -hmm. which will succeed the judge or right, jury right. you know will have to determine um, you know whether it's likely whether mm -hmm. it's true whether the technology mm -hmm. was properly used that's whether right. it was um, you know whether there's a frame going on right. And, and I suppose you would look at diverse sources of information, mm -hmm. multiple sources, mm -hmm. if you have them, and you would let the trier of fact, whether it's a judge or a jury or a little black box, mm -hmm. determine you know, which one is right and which one is wrong mm -hmm. and how you take them all together and what does it come right. out. And, and so the technology would be used to figure out whether the technology was working. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right. <laughs> uh, Ian, I, I, Ethan, I, I'm just so concerned that we live in a time where um, there seems to be such hope with this technology, and mm -hmm. yet uh, I, I think uh, we have to be wary that it can be used against us. Mm -hmm. uh, we can use it against ourselves. Others can use it mm -hmm. against us. And all you can do is remain informed. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You got, got to stay up with it. It's why more and more we, we need we need good science education. You know, we need good technology education. We need to have yeah. a, a world filled with citizens who understand some of these issues, and a world filled with people who also have been taught good ethical behavior. You know, yeah, and yeah. Understand our obligations to one another and to our planet. Yeah, you know? I hear you. Yeah. That's uh, Ethan Allen. Uh, he's our chief scientist. He's unlikable science, and what he's telling you is keep watching the show. Absolutely. Stay informed. <laughs> Thank there you, Ethan. Thank you, Jay. <laughs>